Hi, you're watching Floyd Steinberg's YouTube channel. Did you know there's a rather powerful synthesizer hidden in your browser? Yeah. Let's take a closer look at that technology and if it's useful for you as a musician and what the internet has come up with so far and what the Raspberry Pi can do for you in this scenario. So here we go. Hope you enjoy this. I'll start by connecting my MIDI keyboard to my computer. Okay, so now I can just launch my code editor and the web browser which supports the web audio standard. And now I can just select my MIDI input device here and we've got the synth. Um, coding this took me around three hours. So we got a single oscillator subtractive synth with an M envelope and a filter and filter LFO and a reverb. This is an impulse response to reverb. Uh, let's just listen to this. Now, that doesn't sound too bad actually. So, I also um, coded um, this uh, synth to listen to the mod wheel so I can change the filter frequency while playing. So, now let's. Uh, just use the arpeggiator here on the key steps and um, that's it. So now we got a short sequence going and now I can... Let's change the resonance a little bit. Yeah, okay, enough of this. Um, I've uploaded this to my web page and I've documented the code so you can take a look at it yourself. Uh, as I'm a lazy copy and paste programmer, I've included some libraries which you can download from the internet and I've provided the links to uh, these libraries below in the description of this video. Yeah, if you're interested, take a closer look and see what you can come up with. The Web Audio API was introduced in the early 2010s in an ongoing effort to take application development online. And the range of tools it provides for creating audio is not limited to virtual analog synthesizers. You can also create samplers and yeah, frequency modulation and um, the architecture of uh, this API is very modular. So let's take a closer look at that. Okay, so here's a brief overview on this API's architecture. This may be a little bit simplistic, but I think uh, you will get the point. So inside your browser, there's a thing called the audio context. This is everything happening in audio. And um, now, once you created those contacts, you can add an oscillator or any sound source you like to it. Uh, that may be those virtual oscillators I showed you in my example, or it can be samples or your microphone input or whatever you can come up with. So let's call this the audio source. I hope you can read this. And now, once this thing is running, you usually want to add a gain node to that. That is an amplifier. So that's gain. And once you got that, you can add whatever you want. So for example, um, I can use a filter. And then we can add a convolution, reverb or whatever you're up to. So now once you're done you can all route this to the audio output. So here's the speaker symbol. <laughs> I hope you can rup, 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 read this. Okay. Now the nice thing is um, you can add anything you want in this um, setup. 
and combine it any way you like. So for example, if I take another oscillator here on the audio source and add it in this point of the chain, then the signal coming from this oscillator will be modulated by the signal coming from this oscillator. So we've got a frequency modulation synthesizer here. Or if you take an oscillator and add it to your filter, then we've got yeah, a filter frequency or filter resonance modulation going on. And so on and so on. As you can see, this is really flexible and powerful. And of course, I'm not the first person to use this web audio API to create a synthesizer. So let's take a look at what uh, other developers have come up with in the 10 years which have passed since the introduction of this API. Okay, so this is a semi-modular synth. Um, this is the address. And this one is quite glitchy. I don't know what they did here. There's lots of audio glitches and hisses. Let's listen to this. So now you can choose the waveforms. And let's turn on the arpeggiator here. Play around with the filter color frequency. think uh, what they did here is to add uh, an effect for each oscillator which is quite compute intensive so you shouldn't do that if you program it yourself. Next one. Here's another nice one. This is called ACID Machine and it um, features yeah, two 303s and uh, one classic drum module and you can play and modify all the sounds and you can also create simple patterns. Listen to this. of the classic Juno 106. Uh, this one has got MIDI input, so we can play on the keyboard. And all the classic features are here, for example, the chorus. Let's change some parameters here. Let's add a sub oscillator. Okay, and uh, some filter environment. Filter resonance. High pass filter. So the best synth I found online um, is this one. It's got a lot of um, parameters you can edit and they've got some really great presets here which he calls can load and save and it's got MIDI support. Let's listen to some patches and let's compare the different browsers perhaps. So here's one patch. <laughs> The 
effects are in particular nice on this one. So here's another patch. <laughs> shall we so let's listen to this this one here Elisa this is an edge or a chrome variant and here's the Firefox so do you hear any differences Firefox. Here's Edge. Once again, Firefox. Edge. You see, the envelopes seem to be a little bit snappier on Edge or yeah, the Chromium engine. differences there. Interesting. Yeah, enough of that. Let's try something else. So as we've seen, the Web Audio API's performance is really good. And developing applications in JavaScript is quite easy. So what's the catch here? Well, the problem is that uh, musicians rely on VST plugins or virtual studio technology to use in their digital audio workstations to create music. At the moment, it's not possible to incorporate a browser as a VST plugin, so that's maybe a thing you want to look into if you happen to be a browser developer, okay? So, well, there's one solution I can come up with at the moment, and that is using a Linux audio subsystem because of its ability to root MIDI channels and audio channels into any software running at the moment in the system. So, let's take a look at that. Well, and that didn't work as expected because whatever I did and whichever setup I tried to uh, apply, I just couldn't get the browser recognized as immediately put an output device in Linux audio subsystem. So I'm just going to connect a hardware media interface here and use that to control the browser. This is kind of cheap workaround, but well, it will work. <laughs> Yeah, and that's it for today. I hope you found this useful and interesting, and if you did, please consider subscribing to my channel. There are lots and lots of other synthesizer-related videos on there. Please take a look. And as always, thanks for watching, and see you next week. Bye-bye.